What an amazing day one it was in the second Ashes Test here for Australia. And 5 for 339 really has Australia on the front foot. It has England already at a 17% win chance, win probability there. 21% the draw with a little bit of potential rain about today. Uh, and also 62% for Australia. Obviously, the, the draw comes in as well with just how big of a score Australia were able to get. But I think this comes down to some of the mistakes that England made and then just some of the incredible batting from the Australians. We came into day one in my preview saying that we did need to, a big step up from Warner, Labashain and Smith. And we'll go straight into that scoreboard now. And you know, Warner was 66. He batted really, really well. The, one of those mistakes that we're speaking about with England was that Ollie Pope drop early on. They just gave him that life on 20 and he ended up getting that extra 40, 45 runs there. And, and that, that just really helped open up the Australian innings. That was when Uzi was still there. He didn't score a lot of runs, but that partnership really, really laid a platform and is super important for the Australians there. Just to leave Labashain and Smith down that little bit lower, just get a little bit more shine off the ball. And that first wicket, you know, Kawaja got 17, but it was in the 24th over. So at the start of the 24th there. So amazing, amazing opening partnership to score 73 when English the England boys sent us in to bat. The big thing here is, you know, you can't push too hard against that decision to send the Australians in to bat because I would imagine the Aussies would have done the same thing. The conditions were great for bowling. The Aussies just did great. They just were absolutely amazing. And obviously that, as I said, that chance from, from Pope, it, it wasn't an easy one by any stretch. He just had to give it a bit more time and, and he kind of like rushed forward towards the ball at it rather than they're giving with it and allowing it to probably have that extra meter that he could uh, you know, use a little bit more soft hands and he kind of just pushed out a little bit too hard. But you know, those kind of moments are massive because you get Marnus in really quickly and someone that hasn't scored runs in the last couple of innings, especially against this team, he actually came out you know, a little bit later in the, in the piece and he still looked a bit pushy. He, there was some, some balls that, you know, half a meter, a meter outside off that he was just kind of fishing at. And if they had a gully instead of just the three or four slips, it would have went straight to him and, you know, he's out and then you're into Smith and, and Travi Head fairly quickly. Whereas, you know, when Head can come in so late in the piece, you know, by the time the, the Aussies were three down, it was three for 198 and that's, you know, Travis Head's wheelhouse. So, yeah, just wanted to speak about Davey Warner and, and him him and his personal, personal personalized innings there at 66. So the best thing for him is he did play within himself for the most part. He did have one loose shot, two loose shots early on. We just played a little bit outside his body, um, and, and that was kind of a, a little bit of an issue, but thankfully he didn't get out to them. And as I said, he got the drop catch, got his first life, which I haven't seen in a while, against the English. So that was great. He did have a couple of really strange baseball type shots, we'll call them. Uh, some, some sweeps off Ollie Robinson. Though I've been having a bit of a lot like Ponting was saying, like, yeah, you can't be bowling this slow. Yeah, and I feel the, the English commentators as well. Like, he was bowling under 80 miles. So, yeah, for Aussies, it's a... It's in the one mid 120s, so 126, 127 kind of style there. And yeah, for these test opening batsmen, anything under 130 is, is slow. That's like medium pace to them. So yeah, for us, it might be a little bit quicker, a bit more like first grade standard would be like a 125 kind of bowler. But uh, yeah, he was able to, he almost, he almost held out to the deep square. But you know, a few of those shots and just the positivity in, in his outlook on this innings was much better. I like that he was thinking more about where he was going to hit it rather than his technique. And that's the biggest thing for, for these guys. And, you know, Marnus, it seems like he's very much a, a fiddler. He changes his technique. He, he thinks a lot, obviously. And you can see earlier on in these innings, he was just, he was thinking more about the technique and, you know, trying to get that right. And then he'd go, oh, he'd just make a little bit of a mistake. And you're kind of a bit bit jerky with your movements rather than just being positive in your, uh, in your play. And that's something that Steve Smith was exactly that today, which we'll speak about in a sec. But Warner showed much more positivity, much more of a you know, making one decision rather than being in two minds for, for the majority of this innings. And, and he ran incredibly well between the wickets. He always does. But I just think that is so helpful for his, his innings. If he's really loud, really positive in his running, that's when he comes out and does really well. So that you know, 75 strike rate was so big for the Aussies in this one. And great to see him relieve, alleviate a little bit of a pressure on himself as well. Uzi obviously you know, batted for a tremendous amount of time in that first in, uh, first test. Thankfully, in this one, we didn't need his massive scores. We did in the first, and that shows a great team. You know, as I said, in that first one, Aussies were still able to win without Marnus, without Smitty um, being able to score many runs. And this time, they stood up. And, you know, that partnership for Marnus and, and Warner there was obviously you know, great for the five or six overs, kind of just, you know, settled things down a little bit. Warner gets out, and it's Marnus and Smitty back at their best. A lot of great shots there. They were kind of, you know, Marnus kind of, Started fairly slow and then picked up a bit. Had a bunch of fours off his legs, especially. 
a um, couple of edges as he always seems to do through the through the gully region but um yeah he was great for for that it did slow down a fair bit so they got to 30 odd off, off 50 odd there and i actually went to sleep just at at, at tea so it was a pretty late one but watched the rest this morning before doing this video and it did slow down a fair bit just straight after tea so a few overs went past Minus slowly got to that 47 and then obviously got out. It was a nice ball from Ollie Robinson again. This time he wasn't, you know, playing too far outside his off stump, which is good. So, yeah, unfortunate to get out for 47, but yeah, I think it'd be good for him to get some confidence going into obviously the next innings and then test three and, and onwards from there. But uh, yeah, Smitty, absolutely dominant. From ball one, he was going at, I think it was 24 or 15, all really good shots. Uh, the, his ability for a guy that, if you look at his grip, his grip has it like that you want to be playing through square leg every ball and we've seen that for a lot of his career that that's where he scored a lot of his runs walking across and 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 you know his hand eye his ability to play the ball late he's able to hit everything through the leg side but he actually does have one of the one of the more beautiful cover drives in the game he a bit different to, to someone like warner who when he's playing his best he's kind of punching it and, and kind of check shotting it and uh you know similar to, to travi head with a few of his like back foot punches and stuff like that but with Smithy, it's a big flail. It's a big swing through with the bat. He's all in on it. And uh, when it comes off, it's absolutely stunning. So his ability to play either side of the wicket uh, was great. So yeah, he started really, really hot. Did slow down for a good portion through the middle, but he's one of those players that when he does get bogged down, he doesn't seem to play that rash shot and get out. You know, he end up at a 57 strike rate after being you know, well over 100 for the first sort of 20, 30 balls of his of his innings there. And he's just an absolute master to watch. As soon as they were together, it was like, oh, can't, you definitely can't go to bed now watching you know, absolute you know, class at, at its best there in Steve Smith. So for him to get 85 not out here, you'd expect another 100 out of him in the next morning with obviously batting with Alex Carey. Uh, there's not too much else to say on Smithy apart from just he's amazing um, and really enjoy this while he's here, guys. He's got you know, obviously a plenty more years left and, and hopefully he can go on to set crazy amounts of records and, and win Aussies plenty of matches. And, and this one here goes a long way to, to helping Aussies take you know, a two-nil lead. And hopefully this uh, this test match does go the whole, the whole way here. Just really, if you didn't get to watch much of this, the amount of movement off the deck, the amount... Of movement in the air in this was there was plenty um off the deck wasn't crazy amount there was a couple of them where you know wickets fell or it kind of wouldn't move too much and they'd and they'd miss the miss the outside edge and that was the good thing it was actually moving a bit too much but you know josh tongue in, in his first well his second test there looked really good he obviously bowled a, a beauty to kawaja there and, and a great one to warner as well so i'd suggest go back and watch those wickets so there was definitely some something on offer for for the bowlers, for for the for the English bowlers anyway, and Josh was able to get a couple of those wickets, uh, obviously a little bit quicker as well. And that's the big thing with the the three other quicks in in Broad Anderson, and also a Robinson. They're a little bit slower, and that just allows the you know the the Aussie batsmen to have a little bit more time. That if it does move a little bit late, they can actually adjust their bats. Whereas when you're a little bit faster, like what Josh is, it's very very difficult to actually do that because of the fact that yeah he's just he's just that much quicker and, and that late swing that he was getting it's just a, a little bit too much a little bit too quick for you to be able to to adjust at any stage so yeah good two wickets from him but what i find a little bit tough is that in this type of game you see joe rudy comes in and gets two wickets and and yes a couple of them, they weren't great wickets to be honest but that's the type of player you can't like you you need and in, the, in this type of in this type of wicket sometimes like yeah you know, it, it doesn't actually pay off if you look at the the fast bowlers there you got plenty of overs you know about pretty close to 80 overs between between the four of them about 70 72 i think yeah something like that between the between those four pace bowlers and they got three wickets of the day and three of them are going over four and over so that's when you go okay well we need that we need that spinner to be able to change things and and, and having root there it obviously it worked it got the two wickets but you know, to have a frontline spinner i think is is really important Sometimes it works and it's like, oh, well, all the four, you know, do you actually need four quicks? I don't think you need, you know, four good quicks, especially when you've got, you know, Stokes that can bowl a little bit as well. It's three and him. Yes, he's not feeling his best, but yeah, I think just, even if it is a younger spinner, I think you've got to blood them and, and give them a chance because if, you know, it, if it's not conducive to the pace or, or the, the batsmen are playing the pace pretty comfortably, then you need to do something about that. And they, they just come into it a little bit underdone, obviously, on the spin front. Um, looking at that pitch, they would have loved it and go, oh, we don't need one. But yeah, that, that type of player is is important and you, and you see with with Cameron Green's wicket it was not nice at all to be honest with you there at, at a you know you end up getting a duck third ball duck so he's faced two balls and if he should have been watching I was watching and could see that Root was just 
skidding him through a bit. He was he was he was tossing him up a bit. It was kind of on a length and skidding through a little bit. Like when Smithy was playing his first over, I was like, oh, okay, that doesn't look that easy to face, just because he was he was honing in on sort of middle and leg, and darting it like not darting it through, but it was just skidding through a little bit. And Cam Green gets a one that's like a tiny bit short, and he's trying to pull it third ball, and it's just it just didn't work out obviously for him. Um, yeah, those are the things you kind of got to be be watching, and and it was just a little bit of a. A different change up a little bit of a variation there that, that the spinner could get that the the pace bowler couldn't so that was that but let's just talk about travis head to finish things off while, while we're here the 77 off 73 such an incredible batsman his back foot punches his cut shots they obviously they made mistakes here with head as well within his first 10 balls they gave him two wide cut shots two short balls that set off it was just disgusting bowling unfortunately and that just gave head that, that little bit oh thank you thank you four four gets him to 10 really really quickly and when you when you get Travi Head like ten off seven, he's in a mood then, and and it just doesn't really slow down until you get him out. And he kind of obviously got himself out. It was a good Joe Root ball, ball, knowing he you know seeing him coming down and just pushing that little bit wider to to get the stumping. And you know give Johnny Besto credit, he got the he got the stumping there. He didn't drop Manus as well, so uh, he he needs some credit uh, on that front as well. And uh, what about the protesters coming on and 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 Besto carrying him off? That was pretty funny as well. So yeah, Travi Head. An incredible batsman, great through the legs. So they start they tr- they started bowling a little bit straighter to him as well. Tried the short ball and, and none of that worked. He just got runs, runs, runs. Um, so they weren't really sure where to bowl to him. And it's obviously that top of off is where you need to bowl to Travi. Um, yeah, that fairly full delivery there. He's obviously a better back foot player of the of the ball. And if you do stray to sort of leg stump, he'll clip you through the leg side. But it's that sort of top of off, just that outside off, but the fuller version of that. You got a couple of cover drives in there, but for the most part, he's looking for that back foot punch. And yeah, I just don't think they bowled enough to him there. And yeah, Smithy being the anchor of this innings was terrific. And I can't wait to see him get 100 tomorrow. Cam Green getting out kind of, kind of hurts, but thankfully, it looks like you know won't need him as much. Hopefully, you know Smithy and you know Kerry being in such good form at the moment can both get out get out there and and continue to score plenty of runs and get the Aussies up towards that 450 or so mark and just really drive the nail into the coffin of, of England's chances because you know with with Nathan Lyon in this team they're, they're going to have a pitch that will deteriorate eventually and and he can uh, he can really dominate on that on that last day and that's the only issue there with sending a team in you need to make sure you do get early wickets and that was the you know where Kawaji is like, oh, 17 or 70, that's a pretty crappy innings. But yes, he wasn't, uh, he didn't get away like like Warner did, but he, he served a real good purpose just to keep wickets down. He fell just before lunch. So that was such an important one. Um, and yeah, I think the, the English boys have such a, a large amount of work to do. We did see in the first test that, you know, Aussies were in this kind of position after their first day of batting and then fell apart. So I think, you know, Smithy being in there, I think is going to be really helpful. Um, and Kerry just continue doing his thing. And they do have, Obviously, Starkey and Cummins as well that are that are obviously inform with the bat, and Nathan Lyon, of course. But uh, yeah, that's that one there. I, I hope that uh, that helps you guys out with with day one, and it's such a massive day for the Australians, and uh, I cannot wait to to watch day two and, and hopefully see, I think a thirty second hundred for Smithy in his career. So big props to him and his efforts out there. Travi had amazing work, Manus and Davy Warner, and a little shout out to to Kawad for kicking things off at the start. England are in trouble. Let's we'll see how they bounce back. <laughs> 